Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Yorski, the Toronto website developer. And in this fourth video tutorial on Bootstrap, I want to show you how we can add some responsive images to our site. But before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at my website, Toronto website developer.com. Here you can find links to my book as well as all my video tutorials and uh, my video tutorial series, um, which you can purchase. Um, and it goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. Alternatively, if you can't afford any of that and you want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do that as well. I uh, greatly appreciate that. And I do keep track of all those metrics and it helps me to continue to develop these uh, and know what there's an appetite for. So with that said, I'm going to head back over to localhost slash bootstrap slash index dot or two dot HTML. And this is an example of what we'll be adding to our site. You'll see I've got a couple different options that we'll walk through. Uh, the first being a uh, a thumbnail image of my dog Bailey where it's actually a circle so that's all done with CSS crops the image and then I've got this nice rounded border as well as a read more button with a h3 tag and a caption here uh, secondly I've got an image of Susie with rounded corners no border and again read more and lazy and then lastly just the straight thumbnail and all of these you'll see as I shrink my page are all responsive um, and that's all simply done with bootstrap and CSS. So why don't we jump into actually getting this going? You'll notice I am back into my index.html um, web page here, and I've got my three columns. I've got tutorial one, two, and three, and then I've got this empty um, new column that I'm going to add to. And so uh, just like before, I'm using my responsive uh, grid system. We're looking at a medium and small and extra small screen size. If you're not familiar with all that, you can check out, I think it's video tutorial two where we're talking about the grid size. So I'm going to go ahead and add an image in here. And so I've added these prior to recording this. So uh, you'll see I put them in the images folder in my web root. And I'm going to add a class to the image. Actually, I'm going to show you what this image looks like before we do that. So when I reload this page, You'll see I get this giant image of Bailey zoomed in on her nice eyebrow and barely open eyes. So I obviously don't like that. So I want to add a class here. And this comes from Bootstrap. And you're going to add img-responsive. And when you do that, you get some handy, uh, handy class associated with your image, which actually ends up providing a display block, max width 100, and height auto. The height auto is something that you want to take note of because if you do have different sized images, uh, these could look a little bit off. And you'll see that when I add another image of Bailey. Um, but right now I've got this image. Uh, it's kind of nice. Let's say I want to add a caption to it. I can do that by going ahead and adding a p tag, and, or rather a div, and class is equal to, it's called caption. And when I do that, I can then add my h3, and then just Bailey sleeping. And then here I do my p tag Bailey catching some z's. And I'm going to add a nice button is equal to nothing. And a class, I'm going to explain this in a second. slash a slash p let's close up our divs and let's take a look at what this looks like so now we've got this thumbnail image of bailey nice h3 got a nice caption have the ability to read more which doesn't actually take me anywhere and if i start scaling this in you'll see that the image responds to that um, and so it will be sized appropriately depending upon the device we we're looking at and if i wanted to add another one i could obviously do that and so I can paste this down below and let's change this up. So we're not using the same image. Let's just do Bailey. Was it sleeping? Bailey grass. Image responsive and it doesn't matter. We'll keep the same information. So now we have two images and here's what I'm talking about where they have different heights. So you'll see that both are using height auto and so they're a little bit off. Um, but let's say that we want to add a circular image to that. So knowing that Bootstrap has image responsive, um, it also has, and I don't know if this will work right on here, but it has image circle. 
And so now when we go ahead and we reload this, you can see we get the circle right away. We're applying both to the same image. And up here, if we didn't want this guy, let's copy this, add Susie to the mix. And instead of image circle, let's do image rounded. And same thing, we can reload this and you'll see we get a nice image rounded of Susie. And again, different heights, so we're getting different scaling, but they're all taking up the same width of the column. Now, as I mentioned before, we can also add a nice border that will surround all of this. Um, or we could just surround the image, it's entirely up to us. And we do that by adding a nice div here. And we put thumbnail. And if we just put it around the image, we'll check out what happens there. And we'll just copy this guy. And here for Bailey, we'll put it all around everything we're doing to see what the difference is. So if I go ahead and I reload this page, you'll see the first one, we put the div with the thumbnail around everything. So it encompassed the image, it encompassed the H3, the P tag, the read more, and you'll see that we get the the, uh, the border around all of that. Whereas with the second image, we just put it around the image. And so that's all we're getting. And then we have the caption, the description, and the read more button outside of that. Um, so really that's it for responsive images. I know this isn't a lot, but this is pretty handy in that you can change the style of your image however you please. Um, with just a couple classes that are provided right out of Bootstrap. I also know that I mentioned I would explain to you what I was doing with button class primer here. This is something we'll cover off in a future tutorial, but Bootstrap provides us with these handy um, classes. One, that's button, which um, will format a button, but you can also add a button primary. You can add danger, which changes the, the color, and you can do um, for the default, and I think there's one or two other ones. I can't think of what they are. Maybe alert or warning or something like that. And you'll see that they all have different colors associated with them. You can find more information on uh, getbootstrap.com slash CSS. Uh, in the right, there's their buttons. And I'll just tell you right now. Oh, no, I don't know what it is. There's button, success, info, warning, and danger. Uh, so you can use all of those. Uh, but that's it for this video tutorial. Again, if this helped you, please leave a thumbs up, uh, comment, let me know. And hopefully we'll see you for the next video tutorial where we'll be talking about navigations uh, with Bootstrap. So again, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.